Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. Before we get started with today's video, just want to say thank you. We're at 21,300 subscribers, and without you all, that would not be possible, so thank you very much. Also want to remind you that you can become a member to the channel now for just 99 cents a month. By the end of February, the MVP, VIP, and Pro versions of the memberships will be gone, and all those perks are going to drop over to the eBuzz Central member. 99 cents a month. It's an easy way to support the channel and, of course, support the content you like. And I would also like to say, please like the video. That's the only way I can stay in YouTube's algorithm and get this great information out there to all the people that love Linux. So let's hack YouTube and like this video and just throw everything off the rails. So smash that like button. I would sure appreciate it. Also, I would like to send a shout out to my two newest members, which are Israel Roy and Reginald Obricus. Hopefully I got those pronunciations right. If I didn't, please let me know. And I've got a couple people here that rejoined and some have upgraded. So thank you guys so much. The support for this channel has just been off the charts. Thank you so much. Now what we're going to take a look at today is Pika OS. Some of y'all may have heard of it and some of you may have not, but it's a gaming focused Linux distribution that really centers in on the ease of use and high compatibility. Basically, it's using the know-how from Nibara combined with an Ubuntu base. It's also got an unrivaled software compatibility. So, if you scroll down here, it gives you a little bit of information. It tells you about their, their mascot up here, which is the little burb. And in gaming out of the box, Pika OS is set up to enable as pain-free as possible Linux gaming out of the box. Drivers included, they include the best drivers for your hardware, either baked into the OS or installable through their welcome app. Excellent performance. The combination of up-to-date drivers and custom tweaked kernel means Pika OS is fast. And due to the Ubuntu base and custom patches, Pika OS has a high level of software and hardware compatibility. And of course, it's open source. All of the code can be found online. You can go through it. You can look through it and do whatever you want. And then, of course, you've got your download down here and if you come to the top they've got features and download now if we click on features it just brings you down here and then if you click the download it brings you down here to the download and then of course you can reach them on discord on uh, github and of course launchpad so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to get on over to the desktop and if you download pika os throw it on a usb open it up in a virtual machine this is the screen you're met with now, right off the bat, it's got a super graphics controller. So I'm in a virtual machine right now, so it's going to let me know. Could not establish a connection to the super GFX controller because I'm in a virtual machine. But this is going to help you set up your graphics, set up your graphics cards, and help you get things downloaded and get the drivers running to give you the proper experience while gaming. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then down here, you've got important info. These are a few things to keep in mind. You understand that this distribution is not an Ubuntu flavor. This is a hobby distribution, so we will try our best to provide formal support, but it will not be guaranteed. Although Pika OS might provide identical patches and user experience to the Nobara project, we are not directly or part of them. The installer may freeze for 5 to 10 minutes after going through the partition scheme. Do not interrupt it. This will end it and end up in a corrupted system. Try to use NALA instead of APT when using the terminal. It is much faster. You understand the X1 driver downloads needed binaries locally and does not directly package or distribute any copyrighted firmware or other related data. In case you need to log in for this session, it's Pika OS as your username and Pika OS as the password. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And if you come down here, as you can see, it is a base GNOME 43 feel. If you come up top, you can see that you've got your balance, dark mode, night light, uh, of course, your speakers right here. If you had a mic on here, you would be able to go there and adjust the settings on it as well. Power, settings, and then, of course, screenshot. And then if you come down to the bottom, you can install Pika OS. Now, I believe this is a customized version of the Calamari's installer. So we'll open it up just to make sure that I am right. And as you can see, it is a customized version. And if you go through it, it looks just like Calamares. It's just a hair different than what you might see in other distributions. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Yes, I will close that. Open this back up. And then down here, you've got the Welcome to Pika OS. Now, when I was doing this earlier in GNOME Boxes, 
it would not open the welcome screen. And I do believe that's because I am in a virtual machine because it's going to have to track what kind of graphics card I'm using, RAM that's issued, that kind of thing. So that's definitely something that if you run it off a live USB, please give me your feedback and let me know how that goes. And then, of course, you've got your Firefox web browser right here. And then the Pika OS repository settings. Let's go ahead and open that up. And up here, you've got your settings. It lets you know what it's pulling from. It's pulling from Ubuntu. And then your updates are on. And then your extra sources, as you can see right here, it's got a lot of them. You've got your official AMD GPU sources, your AMD VLK sources, your fresh Mesa, Kubuntu KDE backports, official Mozilla sources, Pika OS base OS sources, multimedia sources, official ROCM sources, official Steam sources, official Wine HQ sources, and then your extra deb apps, play, and repo sources. And then, of course, you do got the option to have flat packs as well. So those are the repos that it is using. So let's go back up here. You've got your software manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it'll take a little bit to generate the cache, so we'll let it do that. And it seems as though it's done. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. And there's pretty much where you're going to get your software most of the time. So let's say you wanted something like Blender. You could come over here and click on Blender. It's going to bring up a screenshot of it. And then you would just come up here and hit Install. This is pretty straightforward, pretty familiar to those of you out there that use any software centers. There's a VLC right there. You would come up here and click on Install. You do have Search and Package Summary, Search and Package Description. But I'm just going to leave that right there. But that would be your little software manager that comes along with it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and pop back up here. And if you're wondering why I'm not using the super key, it's because it opens up my Tux OS in the background. So that's why I'm going up top and clicking up here. And then you've got your update manager. And then, of course, files. You guys are familiar with that, especially if you know GNOME. Your basic file manager. you got your usual suspects over here. And, of course, your home folders right here. Now let's go ahead and pop back up here. And then you've got your settings. Let's go ahead and look at about real quick. And it's Pika OS. I've got four gigabytes of memory issued to it. It's 64 bit. GNOME version is 43.1. It's using X11 as your windowing system. So it's an, and it's Pika OS 2210. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down here. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal and see what kind of resources we're using. Let's see if they have HTOP and they don't. Let's go ahead and pop up top and let's go ahead and make that full screen. And of course, make it a little bigger so you guys can see what's going on. At rest with just the terminal open, uh, you're using about 938 megabytes, which isn't too bad. Actually, it's lighter than some of the GNOMEs I've been using in the past. Like I said, I've only got four gigs issued to it, so that's not too bad at all. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then let's pop back down to the bottom again. You've got your system monitor, and let's go look at the applications. You've got Geary for your mail, contacts, weather, of course. Uh, APX subsystem. Now, this is pretty awesome. I like APX. This gives you the ability to install APX using the APX command to install from the Arch AUR, the Fedora, or the Alpine. So you've got different ways to add different kinds of software on here if you want to utilize those. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. As a matter of fact, I have uh, went over APX in some previous videos. If you guys would like to see me do an in-depth video on APX, like this video. If I hit a thousand, I'll do one just specifically on APX. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. We will come back down here. You've got calendar, of course, then your utilities, backups, disk usage, tweaks, uh, fonts. We'll go ahead and skip that. Gparted, GW package manager, firmware manager. Now this right here, of course, because I'm in a live environment, this would actually bring up the firmware that's on your system, whether it be a laptop or a desktop. And then we'll come up here, extension manager, out of the box. Uh, right here, we've got some extensions that are pre-installed, but not necessarily activated, which is arc menu, custom accent colors. I think the legacy GTK3 theme schemer auto switcher is on. And then super graphics control is on, which I believe that's based off of Asus, but I could be wrong. But you have the ability to, of course, adjust those however you see fit. Then we'll come back down here. Driver manager. I think this is the Mint driver. Mintdrivers.py. What this will do is search your system for what 
hardware that you have, and this will help you install the drivers need be, whether they be AMD, NVIDIA, uh, Intel, whatever you might need. This makes it smooth for you. Basically what this is, is you get a little bit more in depth than a Nabara, but it's easier to use because you've got the Ubuntu base. So if you're somebody that likes giving different gaming distributions a shot, this is one I would definitely take a look at. There's no drivers needed, of course not, because I am in a virtual machine. Character map, Pika OS desktop layouts. You can change those, I guess. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you can change your layouts if you want to. Traditional, 11, Pineapple, Unity, Gnome 2, or just Gnome. So you could set this up to look like Windows 11 if you wanted to, or a traditional uh, Pineapple. I guess Pineapple would be a spin on Apple. So that's really up to you and how you want to set it up. Let's close out of that. Let's come back down here. And then you've got Power Statistics, Pulse Audio Control, Startup Applications, Startup Disk Creator. You also have Synaptic Package Manager. For those of you who've seen a lot of my videos, you know I love Synaptic. Uh, I'll go over this real quick just in case you haven't. Synaptic is a type search install application. So let's say you wanted to go up here. Let's say you were looking for something like Shotcut. Well, let's look Krita. Let's look up Krita. You could do a search for Krita. There's Krita right there. It's pretty simple. You just come over here, check mark it, mark for installation, and it'll show you the dependencies. Go ahead and mark all of those. Once those are marked, you click apply and it installs it for you. Now, if you want to go through and select a whole bunch of applications all at once, you can. I don't recommend that sometimes because if you do have an error, it's easier to figure it out if you're just doing one application at a time. So we will go ahead and close out of that and we will quit and we will come back down to the second page. You got Synaptic Text Editor, Transmission, and then of course your web apps. I went over these. You could set up web apps if you want to. You could add one when you bring it up. You could come up here and you could type, uh, let's say YouTube. And then you could come down here and put the website in for it, www.youtube.com. And it'll bring the icon in and you can click OK. And there you've got it set up. And if I remember correctly, if you come over here, you can go look in here and it should automatically add it right there. So you've got that application set up. Now, when you open that application, it will be basically a web wrapper for Firefox. It will bring the application up and it won't have all the open close and all that that you have with a regular Firefox browser window. So that would be your YouTube app. So we can go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. And then last thing, let's see if we can change the background. And this should have normal GNOME 43 backgrounds. And it does. So I thought we were already in a dark mode. Let's go ahead and switch that. And it makes it darker. I actually kind of like that look. So if you're somebody out there that likes gaming and they like trying to game on Linux, Pika OS is definitely a distribution I suggest you take a look at. Uh, I'll make sure to put the link in the description below. Go ahead and download it, throw it on a USB, open it up in a virtual machine and give it, take it for a test drive. I promise I don't think you'll be disappointed. And if you're somebody that's already been using Pika OS, please come in the comments below and let me know what you think about it. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month, but that's not all. We are also on Utreon, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.